Hi, thank you for watching today. My name is Sarah and my channel is called Your Two Shell. Today I'm doing a video which is inspired by one I just watched by Lauren Wade and um, it's about looking at the books that you've read on Goodreads and then ranking them in order of rating and then picking the 10 best and the 10 worst from Goodreads and see if you agree. So I'm picking my 10 worst first. So I'm going to go through the, the books which have um, the lowest rating on Goodreads of the ones that I've read and then say whether see how I rated them and see whether I think I agree. Sorry, I'm just trying to make my hair look a bit um, less all over the place. Um, so the first book, which has got the worst rating of all the books that I read on Goodreads, is called um, I Think I Love You by Alison Pearson. That's a book I read in either 2018 or 2019, and I rated it two stars, and the Goodreads rating is 3.11. This is a book about two childhood friends who part of the book is in their 70s um, when they're obsessed with um, oh god David Cassidy and then it follows then the second half of the book is when they're adults in their 30s and they're grown up and um, they come they're still best friends <coughs> and they um, meet David Cassidy as adults and I just didn't I just didn't like it. It was, it was, I managed to finish it, but I definitely wouldn't recommend it. The writing wasn't great, and the story wasn't great, and yeah. Mm. Um, the second worst is called Girls in White Dresses by Jennifer Close. This one I read in 2017. The Goodreads rating is 3.15, and I gave it four stars. I actually can't really remember anything about this. I remember hearing about it from the Books on the Nightstand podcast and I remember getting it from the library. And it's about, I had to look up the plot, it's about three girls in America who were kind of sick of going to everyone else's um, either hen and weddings and not in good relationships themselves. And it's just kind of a look at that. Um, I can't remember it at all. And obviously it wasn't a big that stuck with me. The next one is one I've got on my shelf actually, so I'm just going to grab it. Okay, so the next one is one that I read in 2012 and it is this one, which is The Particular Sadness of Lemon Cake by Amy Bender. I love this book. So this one I actually put at the time on my favourite ever books list and so yeah, I'm really surprised. So on Goodreads it's got an average of 3.21 stars. I read it in Marbella when I was on holiday and um, this is about a little girl called Rose and she can, so when she eats food she can taste or sort of sense in it what the person was feeling who made the food. So like if her mum's feeling really sad when she bakes then she feels really sad when she eats the cake or like if there's a, there's a baker in the shop who really loves their work so she loves eating their food because she can feel like the love in the food. And so it's got sort of like magical realism elements to it and there's a kind of a mystery that goes through it as well and I suspect how the mystery is solved is why some people didn't rate this very highly because it's kind of unusual. <coughs> I, this has made me want to reread my the books I've got on my favourite books of all time list to see whether they match up to what I thought at the time. This has like inspired a new challenge for me that I'd like to, to do. Um, so it'll be interesting to know if this is still on my favourite books ever list, but I, I gave it five stars and I loved it. The next one was um, The Abortionist's Daughter by Elizabeth Hyde, which my friend lent me. That I read in 2013 and I gave it four stars and the Goodreads rating is 3.21. This is um, a mystery um, about a, um, a woman who has a teenage daughter and the woman is an abortion doctor in America. And one day the teenage daughter comes home from school and finds her mum floating face down in their swimming pool. So that's a, a mystery book. Um, number five is Their Fearful Symmetry by Audrey Lippenegger, which is um, 3.24 on Goodreads. I read it in 2012 and I gave it three stars. <clears throat> that one I was disappointed by. I remember because I loved The Time Traveller's Wife so much. That went on my all-time favourites list. And their fearful symmetry is about twins who find out they've inherited like an, a house from an, an aunt 
in London near Highgate Cemetery and they go there and there's like a guy who lives above them who's obsessed with crossword puzzles and then there's kind of some secrets about their aunt I think that get unraveled but I just remember being really disappointed with it. Um, number six on the list is Mr Peanut by Adam Ross and um, this was rated 3.25 on Goodreads. I gave it four stars and it came out in 2012. This book, again, I heard about on Books on the Nightstand. It's a strange one. I've li I li actually wrote a review about this one on Goodreads and I said that the writing style was really amazing. Um, I remember it being about a guy who wants to kill his wife and she's allergic to peanuts and uh, so that's why it's called Mr. Peanut because she basically dies from um, anaphylactic shock. And the detectives who investigate the murder are um, also both having different kind of marital problems and there's some link to these pictures like you know those pictures where they kind of like look like they're a staircase which goes on forever the guy the husband met has something to do with those pictures and they're sort of linked in with the story but I can't really remember how and I remember I did really enjoy that I remember I read that one on holiday as well <coughs> sorry about all the coughing um number seven is one I've also got so I'm just gonna go and grab it this is um, A Week in December by Sebastian Folks. Um, this I read in 2014 when I was like overdue with my daughter and I can remember like being up in the middle of the night reading this being like super uncomfortable and um, not being able to sleep that's what I can remember about this book. This follows a group of seven people through a week in December in London and I rated it three stars the average was 3.26 um and the reason I didn't like it as much there was way too much stuff about hedge, hedge fund management and the financial crisis and the detail got really boring for me so I wanted to hear more about the other characters like there's a footballer there's a tube driver a reality tv um no a boy who's hooked on reality tv there's all different characters and I just remember hearing way too much about hedge fund management and that was boring um, which, is which is annoying because I love Sebastian Folks, he's one of my favourite authors and so I was disappointed about that one. Um, the next one is this one, The Casual Vacancy by J.K. Rowling. That has 3.3 stars average and I read it in 2013 and gave it 5 stars. I really enjoyed this. I had this on audiobook and... I don't know if it's because it was an audio bit, but I loved it and my mum loved it as well. It's basically about a village called Pagford and one of the, um, I think it's called Barry Fairbrother, but one of the parishioners from the parish council dies and it's about getting a replacement on the parish council and all the politics involved, all of the people who've got um, underhand dealings, the normal people who are trying to do their best on the parish council, their families, the things like the poverty problems, the drug problems, the rich poor divide. It's really good. I'm really surprised this was on my like bottom of my list um, in, on Goodreads because I really liked it. But it might just be because people were reading it hoping for something along the lines of Harry Potter and it's absolutely completely different. So I don't know if that's because people were expecting more, you know, stuff along that, that line and it isn't at all. Um, number nine is one I had on audio book. It's called The Returned by Jason Mott. Um, I listened to it in 2014. I rated it three stars and it got 3.3 on Goodreads. Um, it's basically about a couple whose son died a long time ago when he was eight years old and they're now elderly and one day he knocks on the door and he's still eight. And basically it turns out that people who died are starting to come back to life and returning to their families. <laughs> and about how this kind of screws up stuff in the world and I remember don't have good memories about this book I think it was okay it was a good idea but I didn't really like how it was done and then the last one is um one I can't remember too much about so I read it in 2016 and it is my year or the year sorry of reading dangerously how 50 great books saved my life by Andy Miller so he is basically a British guy who was happy with his work and his home but he had this like little nagging voice saying like you want to read like why aren't you reading anymore you used to love books 
and he decides that he wants to um, start again. So he reads 50 books in a year and some of them are classics um, like Middle March, Moby Dick, Tolstoy um, and I remember like so I gave it four stars, Goodreads gave it 3.31. <laughs> I can't remember too much about it to be honest like I read what round about the same time as this I read The End of Your Life Book Club by Will Schwab and that one sticks out much more in my mind than this one because they're sort of similar um but yeah this one might be worth a reread actually because it's that's the kind of um like kind of book that I really am interested in like a book about books so put that one away they were my worst apparently books I've definitely read worse than those and looking at the list they're all around sort of 2012 to 2014 most of them so maybe that means that I now read better books well that would be a nice conclusion wouldn't it um anyhow let me know if you read any of those and if you did what you thought of them let me know if you actually want to try any of them based on what I said and let me know some of the books or what's the worst on your list if you do this with your goodreads what does it come what comes out worst um and then the next video film I'm going to do the best ones which will be nice to see whether I agree with those so anyway I'm, I'm gonna go, go now because I am now gonna take my daughter to the cinema and um, I hope you are having a really lovely week whatever you're up to and I'll speak to you soon bye